Okay, students. In our previous video, we were discussing about the instantaneous velocity. At last, we were speaking about instantaneous velocity. It was the slope of the tangent drawn from the xt graph, that is displacement time graph. Okay. Therefore, now as we know instantaneous velocity it is dx by dt that is equal to as i have said it is limit delta t tends to zero delta x by delta t this is the actual way of representing the instantaneous velocity that is velocity can be written as v is equal to dx by dt where x is displacement, t is time, and it is read as velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. Velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. Let's try to understand some problems by this formula. That is, let me create a problem for which, let me say, displacement is 3t cube. Let me say displacement is 3t cube and you are asked to find out the velocity at t is equal to let's say 2 seconds. It is given, an equation is given like this where x is equal to 3t cube. Find velocity at t is equal to 2 seconds. If you are in a situation like this, then you have to remember this formula that is velocity is dx by dt let's write that formula v is equal to d by dt of x and what can we substitute for x over here we could give 3t cube instead of x therefore let me substitute that d by dt of 3t cube in which this is differentiation now we'll use the rules of differentiation the first rule that you can give in this is we can take the constant out that is d3 is taken out since it's a constant d by dt of t cube then let me write that 3 and let me put a bracket what's d by dt of t cube what's d by dt of t cube d by dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 therefore d by dt of t cube is 3 t raised to 3 minus 1 3 t raised to 3 minus 1 means it is t raised to 2 3 into 3, 3 t is 9, therefore 9 t square is the answer. Therefore, we are getting the velocity is equal to 9 t square. What is the question? The question was find velocity at t is equal to 2 second. Find velocity at t is equal to 2 second. For velocity at t is equal to 2 second, let me write, we are getting an equation for velocity as 9 t square. Therefore, at t is equal to 2 seconds, we will have to substitute instead of t2. Therefore, we will become 9 into 2 square. 2 square is 4. 9 fours are what? 36. 36 meter per second. Okay. Hope you have understood this method. Now, let's have another problem second problem it is displacement is given as 3t square plus 2t find velocity at t is equal to 3 seconds for which we could use the same formula velocity is the derivative of displacement you will have to differentiate displacement in order to get the velocity we'll write that formula v is equal to dx by dt where in this case x is 3t square plus 2t the value of x in this case is 3t square plus 2t we'll substitute it d by dt of 3t square plus 2t and you will have to differentiate this you will have to differentiate this differentiating 3t square 3 is taken out d by dt of t square since 3 is a constant differentiating 2t 
2 is taken out d by dt of t since 2 is a constant 2 is taken out okay hope you know this we have done many problems regarding differentiation in our previous session and all therefore if you are having any confusion you just refer the previous problems then we will get 3 into what's d by dt of t square d by dt of 3 t square is 2 t raised to 2 minus 1 that is 2t plus 2 into d by dt of t d by dx of x is 1 therefore d by dt of t is 1 therefore we will get 2 3s are 6 t plus 2 we are getting velocity as 60 plus 2 okay this is how we are using differentiation in order to find out the velocity from the equation of displacement okay now let's move to the next topic that is as we know there is a displacement time graph now we'll speak about the velocity time graph velocity time graph as you all know displacement time graph was the graph with displacement and time velocity time graph it will be a graph with velocity and time the time will be taken in the x-axis and velocity is taken in the y-axis a graph drawn with time along the x-axis and velocity along the y-axis it is called as it's called as velocity time graph and let us have a velocity time graph like this let's say the velocity time graph is a straight line like this if the velocity time graph is a straight line like this what we have to understand is let's understand by substituting the numericals that is let's say this point is zero this point is two second let this point be the fourth second this point be the sixth second and in this axis we are having velocity therefore let's say this is 10 meter per second the velocity is given in meter per second then let's say this value is 20 meter per second let us say this value is 30 meter per second therefore the velocity is increasing and the velocity is increasing at a constant rate from this graph it's clear that the velocity is increasing at a constant rate if the velocity is increasing at a constant rate then let's find out the acceleration as we know acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time this acceleration is called as average acceleration change in velocity divided by change in time is average acceleration let us find out the acceleration from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to let's say 4 seconds what's the acceleration from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 4 seconds acceleration is change in velocity by change in time therefore let me write v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1 then initial time is 0 and what's the velocity at initial time it is 0 therefore v1 is 0 and final time in the situation it is 4 let's find out the final velocity or velocity at the fourth second it is clearly 20 therefore v2 is 20 and we could write 20 divided by that is 20 minus 0 that is 20 divided by what's t2 t2 is 4 final time is 4 4 minus 0 that is 4 therefore 20 by 4 is 10 by 2 that is 5 5 meter per second square therefore you are getting an acceleration of 5 meter per second square then if you are trying to find out the acceleration at the time interval t is equal to 2 to t is equal to let's say 6 then in this case acceleration is equal to v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1 v2 that is the velocity at sixth second v2 will be the final velocity that is the velocity at the sixth second from this graph velocity at the sixth second it is 30 therefore 30 minus what is v1 v1 is initial velocity that is the velocity at the second second 
you can find out the velocity of the second second it is 10 velocity of the second second is 10 therefore 30 minus 10 divided by t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 is 6 minus 2 therefore 20 by 6 minus 2 is 4 that is 20 by 4 that is our same answer that is 5 meter per second square therefore from this graph now we are having two different average acceleration it's clear that the acceleration is constant at every situation the acceleration is constant at every situation therefore the average acceleration and the instantaneous acceleration will be same in this case if you are finding out the acceleration between any two time interval that acceleration will be exactly same as the instantaneous acceleration that means the acceleration at the second second will be also 5 meter per second square acceleration at the third second it will be also 5 meter per second square or acceleration at any instant in this graph it will be 5 meter per second square okay then let's have another graph let us have another graph for which let me minimize this let me minimize this control a control g then let's have another situation let us have another situation for which let me move this yeah then the next situation is we are drawing the velocity time graph in a slightly different way now this time versus velocity graph it is not a straight line instead it is a curve if it is a curve means things will get complicated that is if it's a curve and let's mark the coordinates on this curve zero two second four seconds let's say this is our six seconds and in this case zero second the velocity is also zero at the two second let us say the velocity is let me compare with this graph and let's say it is what five meter per second then at the fourth second let us say it is 15 meter per second and at the sixth second the velocity let us say mm, it is what 30 meter per second okay in this case the graph is not a straight line it is a curve in this situation the graph is a curve and if the graph is a curve means the average acceleration at all instant will be different that is if i am finding out the average acceleration between 0 to 4 second in the situation it will be different from the average acceleration between the 2 to 6 seconds if you want to understand it let's find out the average acceleration if you are finding out the average acceleration that is delta v by delta t from from 0 to 4 seconds then it should be acceleration is equal to what v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1 what is v2 v2 is the final velocity that is the velocity at the fourth second final velocity that is the velocity at the fourth second you could understand the velocity at the fourth second it is 15 minus v1 it is the initial velocity that is the velocity at the zeroth second zeroth second the velocity is also zero therefore 15 minus zero divided by t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 it will be for final time minus initial time that is 15 by 4 15 by 4 that much meter per second square okay this is the acceleration between 0 to 4 second and let's find out the acceleration between t is equal to 2 to 
t is equal to 6 second let's find out the acceleration between t is equal to 2 to t is equal to 6 second then if we are finding out the acceleration let me write the formula a equal to v2 minus v1 divided by d2 minus t1 and the answer will be what's v2 v2 is the velocity at the sixth second in this case the velocity at the sixth second is 30 minus v1 it is the velocity at the second second it is 5 therefore 30 minus 5 divided by t2 minus t1 t2 minus t1 is 6 minus 2 30 minus 5 it is 25 25 divided by 4 15 by 4 and 25 by 4 it is entirely different therefore in this case the average acceleration between any two time intervals are not same therefore it's not a uniformly accelerated motion it is a non-uniform acceleration situation that is the acceleration is not same at any situation therefore if the velocity time graph is a straight line then acceleration is constant acceleration is constant means the average acceleration will be equal to instantaneous acceleration but that's not the case in the case of a non-uniform accelerated motion that is in the case of a curve if the velocity time graph is a curve means the acceleration is not uniform therefore the average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration is not same then if we are having a situation where we are asked to find out the acceleration at the fourth second we are asked to find out the acceleration at the fourth second then one method of finding out the acceleration at the fourth second is we could find out the average acceleration we could find out the average acceleration that is in order to find out the acceleration at the fourth second let's have a time interval that is two and six then if we are drawing a straight line from two and six and if we are finding out the slope of this line slope of this line means let me draw a triangle like this and if you are finding out the tan theta value you will get delta v by delta t and you will get the acceleration and that acceleration will be like this is that acceleration exactly equal to acceleration at the fourth second no it won't be exactly equal to the acceleration at the fourth second then the next better method for finding out the acceleration is the next better method for finding out the acceleration will be we can decrease the time interval we can decrease the time interval that is if we are decreasing the time interval so that let's take the two points somewhere like this and if you are drawing a straight line and if we are trying to find out the slope of this straight line or the tan theta of this triangle with theta is this then it will be giving you a much more accurate answer but it won't be the exact answer that we require then we could decrease the time interval and you could draw a triangle like this and with the slope then it will give you a much more accurate answer ultimately the delta v by delta t value where the delta t time interval is very small that will give you the most appropriate answer therefore that can be written as that is the instantaneous acceleration or the acceleration at this particular instant can be written as it will be limit delta t tends to zero that is we have to decrease the time interval to a value such that it is tending to become zero but it's not becoming actually becoming zero delta t tends to zero at that instant the delta v by delta t value will give you the most appropriate answer this limit delta t tends to zero delta v by delta t it is called as dv by dt this is the derivative differentiation of v with respect to t therefore in this case the instantaneous acceleration is obtained as a equal to dv by dt a equal to dv by dt this is how we are finding out the instantaneous acceleration and 
instantaneous acceleration is dv by dt in other sense what we can say is if we are drawing a tangent from this point if i am considering a tangent from this point the slope of that tangent is the instantaneous acceleration or dv by dt slope of the tangent will be the instantaneous acceleration or dv by dt <clears throat> okay therefore there are two types of acceleration average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration in a <clears throat> velocity time graph with a straight line the instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration are same but if the velocity time graph is a curve then what we can understand is the average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration is different okay this is how we are finding out the instantaneous acceleration let us have an example for finding out the instantaneous acceleration for which if they are giving you displacement is equal to 3 t raised to 4 the value of displacement is 3 t raised to 4 and they are asking you find the acceleration find the acceleration at t is equal to 2 seconds if they have given you displacement as 3 t raised to 4 and if they have asked you to determine the instantaneous acceleration at the time of two seconds then what's the formula that we have obtained now we know instantaneous acceleration is limit delta t tends to zero delta v by delta t that is a equal to dv by dt therefore let me write that equation over here a equal to dv by dt yes then did they give you the value of v no they have given you the value of x the value of v is not given the value of x is given then how can we find out acceleration at t is equal to two seconds for finding out the acceleration in this case let's move back if we are moving back if they have given you an equation for displacement you could find out an equation for velocity if they have given you an equation for displacement by the method of differentiation you could find out the expression for velocity and if you have determined the expression for velocity then it is easy to find out the expression for acceleration what i am trying to say is in order to find out acceleration acceleration can be obtained by dv by dt for which v is unknown we have to determine v how can we determine v from x how can we determine v from x yes we could find out v by the method of differentiation that is dx by dt then let's find out x initially or let's find out v initially in order to find out v initially that is d by dt of what is x x is 3t raised to 4 x is 3t raised to 4 therefore 3t raised to 4 is substituted over here then it will become 3 is taken out d by dt of t raised to 4 we will get d by dt of t raised to 4 then it is 3 into what's d by dt of t raised to 4 as we know from differentiation d by dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 therefore d by dt of t raised to 4 it should be 4 t raised to 4 minus 1 that is 3 what's 4 3 4 3 is a 12 12 t cube it is the answer for velocity now we know v is equal to 12 t cube v is equal to 12 t cube and if we know v is 12 t cube let's substitute for this v now we know v is 12 t cube if we know the value of v we could easily find out the value of a acceleration is obtained by dv by dt acceleration is obtained by dv by dt then let's substitute for v that is d by dt of what is v v is in this case v is 12 t cube therefore 12 t cube then we could take this 12 out then d by dt of t cube 12 was taken out then it is d by dt of t cube okay what's d by dt of t cube let's take this 12 and put a bracket what's d by dt of t cube it is 
3 t raised to 3 minus 1, that is 3 t square. 12 into 3, that is what? 36. 36 t square. Acceleration, now it is 36 t square. And acceleration, in this case, it will be 36 into t square. What is t? We have to find out the acceleration at t is equal to 2 seconds. The acceleration at t is equal to 2 seconds. Therefore, at t is equal to 2 seconds, acceleration will be 36 into 2 square. That is 36 into 4. Okay. You will get the answer. That will be equal to 144 meter per second square. This is how we are using differentiation to find out acceleration. Okay. Then from this problem, let's gather some information. If the equation for displacement is given and if they are asking you acceleration, you will have to initially find out velocity then differentiate velocity to find out acceleration then substitute the value of the corresponding time to find out the instantaneous acceleration you will get the answer or if you are differentiating displacement twice that is we have differentiated 3t raised to 4 once and you are getting an answer like this then this answer is again differentiated to get the answer Therefore, acceleration can be obtained by differentiating twice the displacement. Therefore, let me write A equal to dv by dt. This is one equation. We could also write A is equal to d by dt of dx by dt. d by dt of dx by dt. It is written as d square x by dt square. That is it is d square x by dt square means what you have to understand is you have to differentiate displacement twice to get acceleration. Therefore, remember this formula. It should be read like this. It is d square x divided by dt square. That is d square by dt square of x. That is two times differentiation of displacement. Okay. Therefore, you could get one equation like this also. Now we know how to find out the instantaneous velocity, instantaneous acceleration and all. Hope you have understood this session. We'll continue with our motion in one dimension in our next video. Okay.